Hello and welcome to this update about the Bash code injection vulnerability, also known as Shellshock. My name is Johannes Ulrich and this is a quick update uh, I put together to a webcast I published uh, last Thursday because this turned out to be such a complex and fast moving issue. I figured it may be useful to put together within sort of 10 minutes some of the highlights of what we learned since Thursday. First of all, there is not just one or two vulnerabilities. Up to now, there are six different vulnerabilities that are sort of considered part of this overall shell shock issue. The first one was found, of course, middle September and then released mid of last week. A patch, of course, was available pretty quickly back then and it test it fixed the original shell shock vulnerability. The test string I put down here is the string that you probably used in the last few days to test your own systems. I just want to note that parentheses and scrolly braces, that's actually very characteristic of this exploit. This particular combination of characters is hard coded into bash as being indicative of trying to export functions in an environment variable. So this is actually a feature in bash. That's why uh, this particular character combination also makes such a good signature for IDSs. An attacker cannot add additional spaces or anything in this sequence because then they would break the functionality and the exploit would no longer work. The problem here is how bash is then actually sort of escaped, that function is escaped to then define additional commands as environment variable. Now, when we first uh, recorded uh, webcast like on Thursday, we already knew that there was a second vulnerability. This second problem had not been mitigated by a patch back then, but by now as of about Friday, uh, late or Saturday, you should have received a patch from your Linux distributions that will fix this problem as well. So for these first two vulnerabilities, we do have a patch available and this second vulnerability is really just a variation of uh, the first vulnerability that wasn't addressed in the original patch. But since then, we had additional and quite different vulnerabilities. For example, this one found by Florian Weimer, he reported this vulnerability late uh, last week, I believe. I have it here, September 25th. It wasn't uh, sort of published initially, but uh, then it became public. At this point, uh, there are patches for this vulnerability, but only in source code, as far as I'm aware. I have not seen this patch in major Linux distributions. The next one was also found by Florian on the same day, just a different way of injecting additional code into a batch. Now, this one doesn't even use the feature discovered earlier. As a result, this one is also somewhat harder to exploit. It's not as easy to exploit, in particular via CGI bin as the original Shellshock vulnerability. And then uh, as people looked at the source code in more detail, they found also some uh, very basic uh, buffer overflow essentially, like this one here that uh, Mikhail Salesi uh, did uh, write about in his blog post. He didn't uh, reveal a lot of details yet, uh, but just stated that uh, this can lead uh, to code execution in bash and essentially the root cause here is a buffer overflow and there are two similar vulnerabilities that uh, Michal here uh, posted about. So overall, we do have a total of six known problems at this point. Two have been widely patched. The other four are only available as source code patches. So if you want to patch for them right now, you have to compile bash from source. However, I do expect uh, patches to be available today or tomorrow from at least some of the larger Linux distributions. However, as we are moving along in this uh, 
Bash Saga here. One of the things you have to be aware of that with these patches, some of the original functionality to export uh, these functions as environment variables may be impacted. So there is an increasing chance of some old scripts or so no longer working. So you have to do your due diligence. You have to test uh, these patches before you sort of blindly apply them. Now, to make things more interesting and more difficult, these vulnerabilities, in particular the very first one, are very actively exploited. We have seen literally hundreds of hits against our honeypots. I did a post earlier, sort of a little collection of exploits that we have seen. It's so easy to exploit this against vulnerable CGI scripts. Now, many of these exploits just blindly hit the index page. Some hit sort of very common CGI bin scripts. There are a couple that sort of zoom in on uh, popular packages that do install uh, CGI bin scripts, even if the majority of the code that comes with this package is, for example, written in PHP. Now let's talk about some of the systems that are not vulnerable, but may be vulnerable. And in part, that's Windows. Windows, of course, does not come with Bash by default. And Bash is not a common add-on uh, for Windows. But then again, if you run SigWin on your workstation, or if you installed Apache and uh, some of the corresponding stacks, like you know, the Apache MySQL PHP code, then you may have also installed called bash at this point. The main risk here, I believe, are, for example, web developer workstations that frequently do install uh, these Apache stacks on their workstation so they can develop code locally and test it. But overall, that's not a huge problem. A little bit larger problem probably is OS X. Now, OS X includes a vulnerable version of bash and uh, also, bin sh is not a symlink to bash. It's its own binary on OS X, but it's really just a slightly modified version of bash. So both bin sh is vulnerable and bin bash is vulnerable. By default, uh, there is no web server running on OS X, and also uh, the DHCP vector that works on Linux does not work to attack OS X. But then again, it's very common for people to install web servers on OS X, so that's when you may be vulnerable again. Also, if you installed uh, additional copies of Batch from third-party package packages, like for example, ports and such, or homebrew, uh, in that case, you may have installed additional vulnerable versions. Now, those packages have updates available, but OS X itself at this point does not have a packaged update for you. As far as exploits go, other than CGI bin, probably the most dangerous one here is DHCP. On Linux, the DHCP client will pull parameters from the DHCP server, set up environment variables with those parameters. And then similar to the way CGI bin does it, well, it will call scripts and many of those scripts are written in bash. So here you could be exposed to exploits just by retrieving a DHCP leases from an untrusted DHCP server. That would mostly be a problem if you have, for example, a Linux workstation that you're using outside of your own home perimeter and you connect to untrusted DHCP servers. An attacker to exploit it against the internal network would have to set up a rogue DHCP server. SSH is potentially vulnerable. I haven't really seen any sort of big exploits for that yet. And that would just be sort of a privilege escalation vulnerability because an attacker would have to have already an account on the system. And then when they SSH the system, they may be able sort of to avoid some of the restrictions that are put on that particular connection. And that's really sort of the big problem a lot of people have with this vulnerability. What's vulnerable versus exploitable? There's a huge vulnerable population here, but only few of these systems that are vulnerable are actually exploitable. And that's the real challenge here. Find those exploitable systems to be able to patch them first. And then 
take a measured approach to actually fix all the vulnerable systems. If you're running a vulnerability scan, the vulnerability scan will usually fail to find, find many of the CGI bin vulnerabilities. Uh, however, they're pretty good to find vulnerable versions of Bash if you are allowing the tool to log in to the service, so to the server. So uh, if you have an authorized uh, scan that actually has credentials to log into the system, they can pretty easily figure out if you're running a vulnerable version of uh, Bash. Now, what about other scripting languages? They're of course by themselves not vulnerable, but sometimes what web developers do is call bash scripts with commands like exec or popen and such. In that case, again, you may be vulnerable. So what's next here? Expect more, expect more problems with Bash, avoid Bash in CGI bin. It's not really a great idea in the first place because it's really hard sort of in pure Bash scripts to do your input validation, everything correctly. Uh, inventory, as you're going through this exercise and finding all the systems, finding out how exposed Bash is, Keep an inventory because you probably have to do it again. Now, a couple of people mentioned SE Linux. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful with SE Linux. SE Linux by itself in a default configuration may not help you much, uh, but then again, it's a good opportunity to learn a little bit more about SE Linux and figure out if in your case, you can use it to mitigate some of uh, this vulnerability. Well, uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions, uh, please email. Of course, I can't take live questions uh, during this recording, but we do actually have a live webcast coming on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we have a webcast with Veracode that will be dedicated uh, to this vulnerability and to talk a little bit more about how to mitigate and find uh, bash vulnerabilities. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Wednesday, hopefully.